What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jason. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. And welcome to my 31 Days of Horror. And today's topic is my favorite science fiction slash horror film. You guys know what it's going to be if you've been following my channel. That's the Terminator. That's what we're talking about today because we got some fun stuff to discuss with this one. Because some people may not find it a horror film. I personally do. And I'm going to tell you why. I think that. So this could be a fun discussion. Just sitting here chilled and relaxed as always. And let's talk the Terminator here. Comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Terminator and all that jazz. You know, let's have a fun discussion about the Terminator. I'm assuming all of you have seen it. But if you haven't, let me know what you thought of the original Terminator from 1984. 40th anniversary of this year, man. Um. I recently, back in August, I got to see this on the big screen. Mind you, a digital version of the movie on the big screen. But either way, it was just a whole lot of fun seeing this movie on the big screen. For me, the Terminator works so well because of the story. I just love the story of this, the time travel aspect to it, the dangers of artificial intelligence, where we're going. And this movie anyway, they're saying that we have a fate. This is your road. This is your destiny. You just got to walk down it. And number two, it, it kind of becomes fate versus free will. Just the original movie, that premises grabs you, man. In 2029, you know, mankind and the machines are at war and they send a Terminator, a machine back to kill the mother of the resistance leader of the future. Then they send a lone warrior back to protect this mother of the future, who is Sarah Connor, played by. Linda Hamilton, and then how could you not get aboard the movie like that? And the way James Cameron directs this film, you know, there's so many things happening here because if you look at the this whole thing, it's a love story. It's it can it's an action movie, science fiction, horror. It's just where do you land? It's just is it more science fiction for you? Is it more horror for you? Is it you know what I mean? It's it's a, a definitely a compelling debate because. Us in the horror community, we've talked about this one. I've even seen people get really nasty about it, saying, yeah, it's not a horror. Yeah, it is a horror. The definition of a horror film is anything that to elicit fear out of you. There's some imagery in this movie. There's some spots in this movie that are they are terrifying. They are terrifying, which we, we will talk about it. So, yeah, they elicit fear out of me. It's just how much of it is horror because i i i'm completely on board with it's a science fiction movie yeah it very much is very much an action movie yes it goes from action set pieces not as much as t2 which is full-blown action but it has action set pieces but the beautiful thing about james cameron he always pushes the narrative forward while keeping the action moving forward too but in a nutshell i consider this 50 percent horror 25 percent science fiction 25 percent action because there is action in the film um, for the, how low budget it was. There is a lot of action in it, but it all has to do with tone. The tone of the film is completely out of a horror movie. You can even say it's set up like a, a slasher film almost. I mean, they're calling him the phone book killer, right? He's, he's killing Sarah Connor until he gets to the right one. Um, if it was just, if, if there was no science fiction in this, it was just a guy who escaped who you know, who's, who's called the phone book killer. He goes into that fucking police station and uses an axe, starts chopping heads off, throwing axes at people, you know, ripping spines out and stuff like that, cutting arms off. I think more people would be saying this is a horror film. So is it the guns that doesn't make it a horror film? No, not at all. Because that police station scene is still fucking brutal as hell. When Arnold goes in there with all those guns and he's unstoppable, just murdering everybody. That that's that's some scary shit, man. And the way Linda Hamilton is selling all that fear. And hell, the Reese Reese tackles it. We see that Reese has fought these things in the future, and he knows how powerful they are and how unstoppable they are. They both uh sell so much fear in this. So for me, it certainly is a horror film because they they they're taking it very serious that this thing's scary. Like, if this thing was real, you know, and it was programmed to come kill you, nothing's going to stop it. It doesn't need to sleep. 
It doesn't need to eat. You know what I mean? It, it just goes and goes until it goes until it finds you. You know what I mean? And that and the great dialogue in, of of the exposition of Reese telling of uh, Sarah Connor all the exposition, who she's gonna be, who her son ends up being. You know the preparation that 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 she has to go through because he only knows the legends of Sarah and and now he's meeting her before all that it's like it's it's because he did come back because the terminator they sent the terminator back he comes back which ensures skynet's survival that humans create skynet because of the arm at the end when she crushes it and then there's the arm you know the scientists pick it up they start studying it and they start back engineering skynet the moment they send the terminator back it it creates this time loop you know what I mean? And, you know, the, the love story. This is what this thing is. This is the heart of this thing. That Reese ended up being, you know, the father of of Sarah's child. And it's, it's, that, it's that love story. And, you know, they were cast perfectly. They had great chemistry. Linda Hamilton and Michael Biehn. And, and a lot of action movies or a lot of movies like this, you know, you always have the... The man and the woman, they get together, you know, they, they have sex. It's usually this gratuitous stuff. But this one's part of the narrative. It's, it's actually part, it's a plot element. And I love how James Cameron does that. And right at the end of the movie, you know, we see that flashback where, where Reese always had Sarah's picture. You know, and for me, I think, I think at first I used to find it strange. I'm like, well, how did he fall in love with Sarah Connor by a picture? Like, it just seemed it seemed weird. It didn't make a whole lot of sense. And then you you keep thinking about it, and, and I just kept thinking about it, kept thinking about it. I go well, because Reese was a soldier, probably had PTSD when he was in these quiet moments. You know, we see him in the car when he's sees the construction equipment, and he wakes up and he's he's on edge all the time. So maybe what kept him calm was that picture. And so in a weird way, that's that's kind of like what planted the seed. It was just she had this calming thing, like looking at the picture was this calming thing. And then that seed grew and grew and grew until he had like legit, genuine feelings for her. And, you know, when he says he went back to meet the legend, but he's always loved her. Right. So I just love that idea, like that idea and, and, and the story of it all. Right. The story is just great. Stan Winston creating the Terminator, just amazing stuff, man. Amazing stuff. The look of the Terminator when it's the skin's all off and it's just the endoskeleton. Um, even with you know the the dated kind of effects with the animatronics, not the animatronics, the uh, the stop motion, it still works for me. Or where they built a half endoskeleton and someone was carrying it like this, like you know the when it's just the torso coming after Sarah. Like this, and he's he, the torso's just coming after her. That's right out of that's horror shit, man. Or when the truck explodes and then the Terminator rises out of the fire. Oh, that's horror 101, man. That's scary shit, man. And that's something like James Cameron dreamed up. Like he had a fever and he had a nightmare of a of this of a machine, you know, like this this um this machine, this endoskeleton, you know, crawling out of a fire. I mean Crazy stuff, man. Just crazy stuff. But Stan Winston, you know, in the 80s, you know, he was a part of so many movies of creating so many characters. You know what I mean? The makeup was great when he's opening himself up and, you know, he's moving his his parts around and stuff like that. It's fantastic. And the action that we do get is pretty fantastic, man. A lot of chase scenes like them running from the Terminator, then getting away in the car from the Terminator. You know, a lot of driving, chase kind of racing kind of scenes. You know what I mean? This gets your, your heart start pumping and all that kind of stuff. And that's the thing. You're not just going to face this thing one on one. I mean, you run from it. That's what that's what clearly that's what they show that you're running from this thing. And, and Michael Biehn's performance is just so intense in this movie. He's an extremely intense actor in this because what he's seen in the future gives us context. You know what I mean? You can't stop these things. And he's like in the future, they got better weapons and stuff. But here he's got archaic weapons from his point of view. So he doesn't know if he can even stop this thing. You know, he, you know, he makes the homemade bombs and shit like that as a way of stopping it. And yeah, just a very intense performance. 
very underrated performance, I think. I think Reese, Michael Bean's performance as Reese here is really fantastic. And, and you know, Linda Hamilton, too. The way she can show vulnerability. Um, any scene she's she's going for really deep emotion, you know, like like before the love scene when she's just shaking, you know, um, you know how scared she is and saying, "Well, it's some legend, you must be disappointed, right?" She just emotes so much emotion at the end of it. And she's tough as nails, saying, "Reese, get on your feet, on your feet, soldier!" Fantastic, she's just great in this. And Arnold Schwarzenegger as the Terminator. This is a role he just owned, man. He just absolutely owned this. He really moves like a machine. His physical performance cannot be understated, man. It is so good. He really feels like he is a machine. And when you just see the endoskeleton at the end, you buy it, right? You're buying it because you saw how the way Arnold moved. The way Arnold moved, the way this thing moved, is so cohesive, I find. Anyway, I still find that, you know what I mean? And it still has one-liners in this. Like when she says, you're a terminated fucker, you know what I mean? <laughs> Which, when she puts it in the press, that is just awesome. What an ending, right? You're a terminated fucker. And the score, too. It is really one of my favorite scores because of the very machine-like sounds to it. You know, the dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-dun-d